Hi, my name is Mike Streitsberg, and I'm a member of the Berlin Elementary School Board. During this brief video, I'm going to give you a summary of the 2013-2014 proposed budget for Berlin Elementary School. I'll cover the budgeting process, the components of the proposed budget, the tax impact that you may expect to see if the budget passes, as well as talk about the two-vote requirement. This will be just an overview, so if you'd like more detail, please check the printed copy in the town report or contact the school or one of the board members. Developing the budget for Berlin Elementary is certainly a balancing act. There are competing pressures from every direction, driving the budget up or down or shifting priorities. For example, we need to comply with directives and mandates from governments at all levels, including federal, state, and local sources. We need to consider the burden on you, the taxpayer, particularly in this economic climate. We need to maintain our commitment to the teachers and administrators that run our school and teach our kids. And at the core of it all, we need to make sure we maintain a high-quality educational program, one that not only results in good test scores, but well-rounded students. Developing the budget is a cyclical process. It starts with the principal, superintendent, and business manager developing several budget scenarios at the board's direction. Budget scenarios the board might typically ask to see would include a level-funded budget, a level-service budget, and a growth budget. In a level-funded budget, we ask ourselves, what would it look like if we ran the school with the exact same amount of money as we did last year? Typically, this requires considering some very drastic cuts, because as costs inevitably rise, if you have no additional funds to cover those costs, you need to make cuts, and sometimes those cuts need to be quite significant. In a level service budget scenario, what we look at is what would it cost us to run the school exactly the same way that we did in the previous year? In other words, with the same staff, the same programs, the same supplies, what would it cost taking into account the uh, growth of expenses to run the school? Finally, in the growth scenario, we look at areas where we believe improvements could benefit the school and the students, whether that be in programs, facilities, or staffing. Once we have one or more draft budgets to work with, we get to work reviewing the details. We talk to staff, we talk to administrators, we talk to people in the community and get their input. Then we make changes and we start the cycle again. When we finally reach a point where we think we have a budget that balances all the competing needs, the board will approve the budget and then submit it to you, the voter, for final approval via Australian ballot on town meeting day. The total budget we are proposing this year is $3,266,890. This is an increase of just over $200,000 from last year's budget. From a pure expense point of view, this budget is 7.11% higher than last year's budget. However, that doesn't take into account any growth on the revenue side. For example, there are several new services that we are required to provide as part of this budget. However, in many cases, there is revenue or reimbursement that covers some or all of those costs. So perhaps a better way to look at the proposed budget increase is to look only at the portion that needs to be supported locally, which amounts to a 4.54% increase over last year. The current slide gives a quick visual look of the components of the budget, both on the revenue or income side and the expense side. Two things are immediately obvious. First, on the revenue side, it's very clear that the vast majority, in fact over 80% of the revenue is from state funding. On the expense side, it's also obvious that the largest cost involved in running the school is in staffing. Labor costs make up about three-quarters of the school budget. The current slide gives a summary of some of the more significant changes in revenue. Most significantly, state-provided revenue is increasing from $8,723 to $8,915 per pupil for the coming year. This results in a roughly 7% increase in state aid. Other notable changes include a small decrease in state transportation aid, an increase in special education reimbursement, and the elimination of the ARRA jobs fund, nor typically referred to as stimulus money. On the expense side, the most significant change, as it usually is, is in educational staffing. Part of this increase is for wage changes, as stipulated in the teacher contract, but a significant portion is due to a 14% projected increase in health insurance costs in the coming year. Most of the remaining categories remain flat, although we do expect to spend more on technology services than we did in the previous year. I mentioned staffing as a major factor in the change in the budget this year, and this slide breaks it down a little further. Changes to salaries, as prescribed in the teachers and support services contracts, are expected to cost an additional $67,000 in the coming year. 
In addition, changes to health care premiums, as well as some other expected benefits changes, will cost about $47,500. In combination, these two items account for the majority of the budget increase, or about 3.77%. There are several staffing changes planned for the coming year as we make minor adjustments to meet the needs of our students. For example, we expect to see a reduced need for paraeducator and English language learner services, but an increase in need for speech and language services as well as technology services. Taken together, most of these staffing changes offset each other, with the result being a modest $11,000 increase due to staffing adjustments. There are three factors that affect the local tax rate and, ultimately, the amount that we all pay in property taxes. The first two are the common level of appraisal and the statewide education tax rate. These are set at the state level, and we don't have direct control in these areas. The third part is the combined impact of the Berlin Elementary School and the U32 High School budgets, which are voted on during town meeting. The common level of appraisal, or CLA, is a system that's been in place for a while now. The CLA is an adjustment to the education tax rate to account for the gap between appraised value and actual value of property. The CLA is set by the state and in the coming year will be 101.96% for Berlin. This rate is about one and a half points lower than it was last year for Berlin. However, a decrease in the CLA results in an increase in taxes. The net effect is a 2.3 cent increase in the local Berlin tax rate. The statewide tax rate has increased by three cents. There are separate residential and non-residential components to this tax increase. The residential tax rate has increased from 89 cents to 92 cents, which results in a 4.8 cent increase in the local residential tax rate. The non-residential tax rate has increased from $1.38 to $1.41, which results in a 2.9 cent increase in the local non-residential tax rate. The third component affecting local tax rates are the local proposed budgets. The proposed Berlin Elementary School budget of $3,266,890, if passed, would result in a 3.4 cent increase in the local tax rate. The proposed U32 high school budget of approximately $13.6 million, if passed, would result in a 0.5 cent increase in the local tax rate. In combination, if both budgets pass, the proposed budgets would result in a 3.9 cent increase in the local residential tax rate. The non-residential tax rate would be unaffected. We find ourselves in a unique situation this year. Typically with the three components that contribute to the tax rate, some go up, some go down, and the net result is somewhere in the middle. This year, however, all three components result in an increase to the residential tax rate. As shown on the slide, the net effect of all three components, assuming both school budgets pass, would result in an 11 cent increase in the local residential tax rate. To put this in perspective, an 11 cent increase in the tax rate would translate to an increase of $110 per $100,000 of assessed value in property taxes. By way of example, a $200,000 property would see a $220 increase in taxes, while a $50,000 property would see a $55 increase. This year, for the first time, the Berlin Elementary School budget will be voted on in two parts. Vermont law, passed five years ago, requires that a proposed budget increase greater than the previous school year's budget, plus an adjustment for inflation, be divided into two parts. So Article 4 in the school district warning and on the ballot will have two parts, a Part A and a Part B. Part A, which reads, Shall the voters of the school district authorize the school board to expend $3,166,235, which is a portion of the amount the school board has deemed to be necessary? The amount quoted in Part A is the inflation-adjusted amount according to the state formula. Part B is the remaining amount, which brings us up to the proposed budget for the coming school year. Part B reads as follows. If Part A is approved by the voters, shall the voters of the school district also authorize the school board to expend $100,655, which is the remainder of the amount the school board has determined to be necessary. Now, because the school budget is divided into and voted on in two parts, there are more possible scenarios than a simple pass or a fail. If both parts A and B pass, then the school budget for the coming year will be the amount that has been proposed by the school board. If part A passes but part B fails, then the amount for the coming year will automatically revert to the part A amount of $3,166,235. If part A fails, 
then the entire budget fails, regardless of whether Part B passes or not. In that scenario, the school board would be required to construct a new budget, which would then be voted on in a subsequent meeting. It's worth noting that this is the fifth and final year of the two-vote rule. It hasn't appeared on a town warning or on a ballot before this because the school board has always worked hard to make sure that any increase was below the state-adjusted amount. In many cases, that has resulted in some significant cuts to programs and services. This year, in light of required student needs and continued pressure from the No Child Left Behind Act to increase our standardized test scores, the board has chosen to present a budget which is much closer to a level service budget. In summary, the Berlin Elementary School Board is proposing a 2013-2014 budget of $3,266,890. The proposed budget is a 7.11% increase over last year's expenses, but due to increased revenues and enrollment forecasts, the effective increase is 4.54%. The school board believes that this is a responsible budget, balancing fiscal constraint with student needs, and we ask for your support on Town Meeting Day. If you have questions or would like more information, we encourage you to talk to one of the board members, talk to the principal, and certainly to attend the pre-town meeting on the evening before town meeting day. Thank you very much.